Hello, my husband and I put together a list of renovation defects in our new home. Although we don't have videos of all of them, we hope that it will be helpful for you if you're doing your renovations. I've organized them into the following categories, carpentry, electrical, flooring, plumbing, painting, miscellaneous and HDB defects. Let's start with carpentry. Chip laminates, shelf boards, drawer boards and casement doors. These actually depend on where your expectations are and for our case, the chip boards were placed at the higher levels to hide them. So be sure to check every single one. Unsecured oven, remember to pull it out to check if it's fixed properly. Exposed cabinet backing, there should be a strip of laminate covering the ends of the board. Missing drawer partition, the kitchen drawers are from Taobao and installed by our ID, so if you're getting any external kitchen fittings from Taobao, make sure that there's a partition between the drawers. Streaky glue marks on casement doors. There was initially a dent and they redid the laminate for rectification. So when it was reinstalled, the dent was gone but there were new glue streaks. So remember to check thoroughly during every revision in case new problems arise. Uneven laminates of casement doors. The wardrobe mirror had to be left here while the door was brought back for touch-ups. It's okay for us but it can be quite dangerous especially if you have young kids. It will be good to make sure that everything is in check before installation or be there to supervise during the actual installation. Unsecured LED driver. Our ID said that it was supposed to be loose so that we can replace the driver if we need to. It's also a case of different standards here and it really depends on your personal preference on whether you like it to be secured or loose. Improper sealing of carpentry. This was quite difficult to spot and was found by our friend. It might be due to the tiles not being completely straight or leveled to begin with but do make sure that your carpentry is sealed properly with silicone. Loose cabinet door partition. There was a gap because the partition wasn't secured tightly and it was fixed by adding nails throughout the length of the cabinet door. Short closet hanging pole. The aluminum pole was too short and it could be easily dislocated. The bar dropped when I was removing some hangers from the closets, so do make sure that yours is properly secured. We'll move on to electrical works. First, we have incorrect switch or light wiring. We had two lights and one fan in our master bedroom, but there were only two switches installed. Since we didn't have a false ceiling, our ceiling had to be hacked to redo the wiring, which was very inconvenient because the problem was discovered after we moved in. Chip electrical sockets, this is quite self-explanatory. Burst or uneven edges on electrical sockets. It's good to make sure that your sockets are smooth before installation because when you remove it after that for rectification, it might damage your walls, backsplash or whatever surfaces that your sockets are on. That's all for our electrical defects and we'll move on to flooring. First, we have uneven tiles. There were some that were quite noticeable for our floors and to fix this, you can either replace the tile or as our ID suggested, add more grout to smoothen the gradient between the uneven tiles. This is more prone for wood plank tiles like ours because longer tiles have a higher chance of warping. Remember to check your walls as well if you are overlaying or redoing your wall tiles. Uneven grout coloration. 
Some grout lines were dark grey and some were light grey. The grout lines were filled on separate occasions and the ratio of cement to water used were different. It might be difficult to have an exact match, but I definitely think that it's possible that there's not too much of a colour difference throughout the entire house. Chip tiles, the only way to go about it is to replace it. Hollow tiles, you can use a coin or a hard object and hit it against each tile to check, and the hollow sound indicates that the tiles were not laid properly. That's all for flooring, and let's move on to plumbing. The first one is really epic. We are using instant heaters, so the storage heater pipes were cut off slightly. They used coin to seal the storage heater pipe. We found out because water was leaking and dripped onto the kitchen counter, and it was eventually replaced with a proper cap. Scratched instant heater. There were scratches on our instant heaters, but our ID shared that it's hard to put it on the plumbers because the scratches might already have been there in the first place. I would suggest taking before and after photos of the instant heater or any fittings you are installing so you can make a fair judgement. Let's move on to painting. Number 1, dirt marks or patches. Ironically, the cleaners left a lot of marks, water and coffee stains on the wall, and eventually the painter had to come back to do touch-ups. Visible paint brush streaks or dried paint. Again, this depends on what you deem to be acceptable or not. Insects trapped in paint. This is a difficult one to spot that was pointed out by our cousin. They actually just painted over the insect while painting our door frame without bothering to remove it beforehand. We are finally at the second last section, miscellaneous. We have misaligned mirrors on DB box. We installed mirrors on the DB box so that we can check ourselves before going out. The mirrors looked off because the DB box doors were not very even to begin with. We got our contractors help to adjust the door hinges until we got a reflection that didn't split our bodies into weird halves. Broken gate stopper. Be sure to check this both after key collection and after renovation. Gap between ducting and walls, this is probably due to the uneven HDB wall and ceiling and do remember to get your ID to seal this up using silicone for you. Here are the other defects we found upon key collection and we submitted them to HDB for rectification. Chip walls and chip doors. Scratched toilet door metal plates. HDB claimed that they didn't have the replacements of the same colour as our flat was in SPF. We eventually chose to not replace it as I didn't want the plate and the door to be of different colours. Detached rubber lining on bifold doors and windows. Faulty window locks. Faulty laundry rack. Ours kept getting stuck and HDB did some adjustments and added some lubricant. Scratched main door metal plate, this was quite badly damaged when we first collected our keys. Broken drain cover, it could be completely detached and it was replaced with a new one. That's all for the types of defects we have. I have a lot of thoughts regarding defect rectification due to my experiences and I think what everyone defines to be a defect is different and ultimately depends on your personal expectations. It's definitely not possible for your house to be 100% free of defects right after it's done and I think that that's where having an ID should help. It's not practical to expect your ID to eliminate every single defect in your house before showing it to you because what you think is a defect may be perfectly acceptable to him or her. What I feel is that having an ID should help you by reducing the number of defects you have to uncover by yourself. Overall, I think that it's good to be prepared to do a lot of work during this phase. You can be overly meticulous and cover all grounds before going through each of them to decide if you want to pursue it. There were definitely times where I doubted myself on whether I'm being overly perfectionistic or whether my expectations are too high. 
I think house reno is something that you're gonna see and live with every single day, so you really have to ask yourself whether you can live with it. Of course, the best practice is to over-communicate with your ID and make sure that what's built aligns with what you're expecting. I think this is where having details written down and having renderings or drawings really help, rather than just describing and talking about what you're gonna do. That's all for today's video and my husband and I hope that this list was helpful for you as a reference. Feel free to comment if you have any questions because I'm a real person and I'll try my best to reply you. All the best for your exciting house renovation journey and bye!